Welcome everyone to German Tool Reviews. Today we have the Knipex Electrician Shears with part number 9505155SB. As noted in the unboxing episode, this unit is most likely a rebranded product from Fumazi out of Italy. Fumazi also makes the same shears for Beta and several other tool brands. From the Fumazi catalog, I believe this is the 230833P model. I really don't have a problem with rebranded tools from a company like Fumazi that has a more limited distribution network as it provides the ability for more people to use the product when it is carried by a much larger company such as Knipex. Alright, so let's go ahead and unbox this thing. What makes electrician shears different from your normal shears is a couple of small features. First being the thickness of the blade, which gives it more rigidity to cut thicker material than you would see on normal shears with a thinner blade profile. Next, the addition of a cable cutter for cutting and stripping multi-conductor cable. Finally, electrician shears will often have the joint covered to prevent any incidental shocks that may occur for the cases where a live cable is cut into. While these are not marketed as an officially tested VDE insulated tool, this is just here for extra protection. Without the cover on this bolt, then you would usually have a large protruding screw that could come into contact with a nearby conductive material. This cover also prevents potential abrasion to nearby cable bundles when used in a tight box. As noted in the catalog, the blades are made from a stainless steel alloy with a Rockwell hardness of 56 HRC. This is the hardness you would typically see on the jaws of a standard pair of pliers, so these are definitely not intended to cut anything harder than copper or aluminum. Cutting steel wire would be a good way to dull these pretty fast. First looking at the holster included with the shears, it is embossed with the Knipex name and contains a clip on the rear for attaching to a belt or pocket. There is the effect of a slight detent when starting to pull it out, so it shouldn't be much of a problem for it accidentally falling out. The holster also has a rotating belt clip on the reverse side. Now looking at the construction of the unit, the blades are molded directly into the handles. We can use a magnet to determine how far the blade extends into the grip, also known as the tang, and you can see it goes about halfway through the handle loops. Taking a quick look underneath the screw covers, it contains a standard hex nut for tightening the joint if necessary. The other side does not have a fastener head, so the hole must be indexed in some other way, possibly with a square or deep profile. The handles are made from a red glass fiber reinforced material, along with a softer rubber-like material in blue. Molded into the handles are some grooves for some additional gripping surface. This handle style is what is known as a double ring holder, whereby one of the two gripping holes contains a ridge and is intended to be used for two fingers. The other hole does not contain this feature and is intended for a single finger or thumb. There are several ways you can hold onto these shears with this handle style and it may be a bit awkward to use them until you find the grip that suits you best. I figure there are about four or five different ways you can hold these. Taking a closer look at the three millimeter blade, we can see an interesting configuration. One of the two blades contains a serrated edge with very small teeth. These are to prevent the material from slipping when performing a cut. The serrations are small enough that you would probably never notice a difference in the resulting edge of the material being cut. The other blade is a normal one without these serrations. On the back of the package you can see there are a couple pictures of a flexible control cable that I just happen to have a very similar version of. So we'll do a bit of testing with that. The particular version I have consists of three 12 American wire gauge conductors. Using the cable portion of the shears it cuts through this multi-conductor cable with no issues. With a little bit of practice you can also use these cable cutters as a jacket removal tool by scoring the jacket and then pulling it off. The picture on the back of the packaging shows these shears use for removing individual conductor insulation as well. Yes, you can certainly do this, but it does take a bit of practice in order to prevent cutting any of the strands. Frankly, there are better tools suited for this particular task. I'm sure if you use these every day, you can strip the insulation with no problem. In addition to the cable cutter, the straight portion of the shears can be used to cut individual conductors as necessary. I got through this size wire without any problems, but it does take a bit of force to do so. Something that you can do if there's not sufficient clearance for the cable cutter. So how do these shears compare to a tool that is specifically designed for cable dismantling like this? Using the Kinipex 1685-125, we first remove the jacket insulation. Since the blades of the cable dismantling tool are intentionally not as sharp as the ones on the shears, it does take a bit more effort to get through the jacket, but it has the advantage that it reduces potential damage to the insulation on the internal conductors. The cable dismantling tool then has a built-in stripper for different wire sizes that is much better suited and more reliable to a novice than using the shears for such a purpose. I feel like one of the most common uses for these type of shears is cutting tape. The length of the blades is about the perfect size for your standard width electrical tape. Even though these straight portions of the blade can cut through sizable conductors, I feel like the best use of this part of the blade is for cutting tape and other thin materials. To wrap things up, while you don't need to be an electrician to use these, they can certainly come in handy for everyday and simple wiring jobs, such as re-terminating a power cable. My only complaint so far is the awkward nature of the handles, which 
believe is mostly due to the compact nature and short length of the tool. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that look at the Kinipex electrician shears. Check out the link in the description to the four of you. There are also some affiliate links in the description if you feel the urge to pick this unit up. Have a good week and I'll catch you guys next time.